Hello everyone. Um, in this lecture we are going to discuss small talk, which is a, a pure or an example of a pure object oriented language. So a little bit about the history. This uh, project was at Xerox, the small talk project was initiated at Xerox in the 1970s. And the main driving force behind the project uh, was Alan Kay. Alan Kay is one of the uh, better known uh, figures in, in the history of computer science. Uh, as it says here, uh, Kay is one of the inventors of the Smalltalk programming language and one of the fathers of the idea of object oriented programming. He is the conceiver of the laptop computer and the architect of the modern window. GUI. So uh, he was actually one of the first persons that uh, that uh, came up with the uh, graphical user interface uh, on personal computers, and that was actually part of the of the Smalltalk uh, project. And uh, so uh, this is a quote from him: "The best way to predict the future is to invent it." So in a way, he invented the future with regard to uh, the the user interface on on personal uh, computers. Uh, so the the Smalltalk AT was really the final version of the of the the Smalltalk project. And Smalltalk is a pure object-oriented language. And what does that really mean? Well, it means that everything in the language is an object. So like cons constants like the number two integers, so your characters, uh, boolean, uh, doubles and so on, vectors, and even the programs themselves, the programs that the uh, uh, user uh, designs are objects. So in that sense, uh, it is pure. And if we compare it to languages like uh, C++ or Java, uh, then C++ is not a pure object-oriented language because, uh, uh, the, for example, the predefined types, integers, characters, are not objects. And indeed, you can actually program in C++ without having to use classes because you can really program as if you were programming C code. And in Java, uh, even though you have to program using classes, the, the predefined types, like integers and characters, are not objects. So you cannot send messages to those types. So neither C++ nor Java are pure object-oriented languages. Now, just for fun, here is a, here is a quote taken from uh, uh, Andy Bauer. Small talk is dangerous. It is a drug. My advice to you would be don't try it. It could ruin your life. So what is meant here is that uh, it, it's often the case that uh, uh, programmers that start to use small talk become in a way addicted to it. And uh, the reason is that the purity of the design is so elegant that uh, it's, it's kind of difficult to not to to have some uh, enthusiasm about the language. So, talking about the design, it's uh, it's designed bottom up with object orientation in mind. It's it's um, uh, the design issue is not to be to allow the programmer to do anything except object orientation. Uh, and therefore, the uh, the design is very uniform and elegant, uh, and uh, uh, and actually, uh, and for example, the the syntax of this language is, is extremely simple, as we will see later. So programs in Smalltalk are, are really all about sending messages between objects. Remember, we have already talked about this uh, that uh, one sends a, a message to an object to invoke one of the methods. Now, messages can be uh, parameterized, meaning we can send pra parameters with messages, and the parameters are really just variables that reference some objects. 
So in a, in a sense, the, the parameters that we sent are really just objects. Now messages can return objects. Messages can have a, a result value. And uh, all objects are allocated from the heap. So there is no, the objects are not allocated from the run st runtime stack. They're all allocated from the heap. And we reference them through what are called reference variables. Um, and we don't have to do any dereferencing. It's implicit in the language. And the, the language comes with automatic garbage collection, which means that when we instantiate an object from the uh, and it's allocated, its memory is allocated from the heap, then we don't have to, as programmers, uh, to, to deallocate the memory. We don't have to, like in, uh, in C++, say, when we do new, we have to make sure that we do delete, but we don't have to do that in Smalltalk because there's an inbuilt automatic uh, garbage col collector. Now, uh, the language supports uh, dynamic binding, which is basically uh, dynamic selection of uh, method at runtime. So when a message is sent to an object, a search is carried out for the for a corresponding method in, in the class to which the object belongs. So we send a message to the object, then the first check is, does a corresponding method uh, exist in the class uh, uh, for the current object. If it doesn't, if the search fails, then a search is performed in the superclass, meaning in the parent class. And if it's not there, then we s continue in the superclass of the superclass. And we do this up till, finally, we get to the root of all the classes, to the root of the class tree, and that's the class object. And if the object class does not have a method corresponding to the message that was sent, then we get an error. So I notice that this search is, of course, dynamic. Uh, messages are not bound statically, not bound at uh, compile time. Uh, they, are they are bound at, uh, at runtime. So a, a search for the method that corresponds to a message being sent is, is carried out at uh, runtime. Now another thing that is uh, um, that characterizes Smalltalk is that it's typeless. So uh, uh, which uh, which is really just another way of saying it, it has a, a, a dynamic typing. Variables just get the type uh, that at at runtime that corresponds to the object in question. And any name can be bound to any object. And uh, there is only one type error that is possible. And that is when a message is sent to an object that has no matching method. So as we said earlier, at runtime, the method, the corresponding method that corresponds to a message is, is searched in the current class first, then in the superclass, then in the superclass of the superclass, and so on, until finally up to the object object class. And if it's still not found, then we get the error. And that's really the only error that can happen. That's, that's a type error, uh, because a, uh, the message that we sent was not understood by the object. Uh, and notice, as we said earlier, this is not detected uh, until uh, at runtime. And uh, one, one point here about inheritance is that Smalltalk only supports single inheritance, not multiple inheritance like, like C++. So, about time to look at an example. Here is an example Smalltalk program. <clears throat> and the first line here uh, is just a uh, um, uh, declaration of variables, but notice that they have no type. So we're just declaring S, F, and C, 
it means that we are we are uh, announcing that s f and c will be used in the code below but they don't have any type because uh, small talk is dynamically typed now the first statement here says transcript show colon enter a line and enter a line is in quotes so enter a line is a string um, now the syntax in small talk is always such that you have a an object on the left hand side and you have a message on the right hand side so in this case the message name is show colon and that message is sent to the object on the left hand side which is actually a class in this case because in small talk classes are, are capitalized the first letter is capitalized so there is a class called transcript which really is just a, a reference to standard out so if you want to write to the transcript we are writing to standard out so we're sending the show message or show colon message to the transcript class now why is it show colon well, if we have a colon as part of the name of a message, then that particular uh, the corresponding method accepts a, a, a parameter. So in this case, we have the uh, show method that expects one character, and it expects a, a, a string in this case. Um, well, actually, that, that it doesn't have to expect a string. Um, in this particular case, I'm just sending a string to it. So I'm actually ac just writing to standard out uh, the string enter a line. So uh, in the next, and notice that we we terminate uh, the statements with a period. That's the uh, that's the end of a statement. Now, in the next statement, we have uh, an assignment. We say S is equal to standard in next line. So again, how is the syntax in, in Smalltalk? Well, we have a message on the right-hand side, and we have an object on the left-hand side. So here we are sending um, the next line message to the object standard in, which is a built-in object in, in, in Smalltalk. So uh, that basically means that uh, we are reading from standard in. And whatever will be read will be assigned to this variable s, which you notice is, has no type. But presumably, it will actually get the type string, because I will, I will input a string, uh, or the user will input a string when this um, method next line is in, invoked. Now in the next line or the next statement we have f is equal to back new. Well this should look familiar. We're sending uh, the new message to back and back is a, is a class because it starts with a capital letter. So we're basically just creating an instance here. We're creating an instance of the back class uh, by sending the new message to back. And notice that new is then a class method. Show here was also a class method because we were sending it to uh, an instance of uh, a class. Sorry, we were sending it to a class, so it's a class method. And what do we get back? We get an instance. We have of the back. So we're creating an instance of back. And f is then a reference to that instance. And s is a reference to a string. Now what do we have in the next statement? This looks kind of strange. Maybe, I mean, this is a syntax that we're not, it does not look very familiar to us. Um, but what we have here is we have a do message. Notice, once again, on the left-hand side we have an object, on the right-hand side we have a message. So we have a do message 
that is sent to S. What is S? S is an instance of a string. S is the instance that is the string that the or reference to the string that the user input. So we're sending the do message to uh, the string. And the parameter that comes with the do message is a block. It's a block of code. So the block and block is small talk um, opens with a bracket and closes with a bracket. So inside a block we can have code that will be executed. So in this case what we are want to do is execute the code inside the block for every element of the string s. And what does that mean? Well it means that we want to execute the code for each character in the string s. And how do we get access to each uh, of the characters? Well we do that with this temporary variable here uh, ch so that this is a uh, this is the syntax we say we, inside the block we say colon ch that means for each element of s we have access to the current character in this variable ch so and what then what comes after the pipe here is then the the code to to be executed and the first one says ch is letter what is this once again we're sending a message, which is on the right-hand side, to the object on the left-hand side. So we're sending the me message is letter to CH. So we're basically asking a question. Well, is letter uh, obviously uh, uh, looks like a Boolean method, so it returns a bo Boolean. So if it, CH is a letter, meaning it's not a, a, a number, for example, then we do something. Well, then we, uh, uh, in the if true part, well, we can look at it this way. Uh, is letter is sent to CH, and what does it return? Well, it either returns true or false. And notice that true uh, or false are, uh, uh, is an object. Everything is an object in Smalltalk. So, <coughs> um, if and and the if true message is sent to the result of applying or sending the is letter to ch, sending the message is letter to ch will result in either true or false. And then we will send the math, math sets if true to that result. So one can send if true or if false to an object of type boolean. So if the result is uh, true, then we execute the code which is inside the block. So the if true um, message expects a block as a parameter and what's inside the block is the code to be executed if uh, the condition is true and what is the code inside the block well it says f at what is f f remember is the instance of a back so a back has a method called at colon which expects a parameter and what is the parameter it's it's what we want to put into the back so in this case, what we want to put into the back is C8 as lowercase. Once again, left-hand side is an object, right-hand side is a uh, message. So we're sending the message as lowercase to the character, basically converting the character to lowercase. And then we add that result to the back, to the instance of a back. So what this um, do loop does, I mean, it's, it's a kind of a loop, isn't it? Because we're looping through each element of the string S. It checks if the character is a letter. If it is a letter, then it adds to the back the lowercase representation of the character. 
Now, what does it then do? Here it has a message which is called to do. And notice that it's in two parts. It's to colon, do colon. So remember that if we have a colon as part of the message, or part of the method name, then the method expects a parameter. In this case, we actually have a message called to do, which takes two parameters. The first one is the uh, integer 26. The second one is a block. And we're sending the message, message to do to the integer 1. So that basically means that the integer object understands the message to do. And, and we, uh, the parameter that comes with this uh, message is 26 and then a block. So the semantics here is that we want to, from 1 to 26, so this looks like a for loop, from 1 to 26, we want to do something. And what do we want to do? Well, in, well that's, that, that's what's inside the block. Uh, and inside the block, we can have uh, access to uh, the index. Similar as the, we had access to each element of the string s in the variable c8, we can have access to the uh, counter, the index, when running from 1 to 26. We do this by colon i, and then we have the pipe, as we had earlier. And what do we do here? We say uh, c is equal to i plus 96 as a character. So at the beginning, i is 1, so we get 97 here, and then we send as character to the integer object uh, 97. And we're basically just converting 97 to a character. And this is uh, using the ASCII table, and 97 in the ASCII table is uh, lowercase a. So when i is 1, we get 97 out of this expression, and we convert that to uh, lowercase a. When i is 2, we get 98 from this expression. We send as character to that object, and we get back lowercase b, and so on. So this c here, which again, notice, is untyped. It, it will actually just get the type, which is the result of this expression. So that will be a character in our case. This c will be first be uh, lowercase a, then lowercase b, then lowercase c, and so on. And what do we do with it? Well, let's look at first here. We say f occurrences of c. So we're sending the method occurrences of to our back instance. And we're sending a parameter with it, which is our c. So at the, in, the, in the first iteration of our loop, remember our c was uh, uh, lowercase a. We're asking the back, how many occurrences of that lowercase a do you have? And the back will, will tell us. So the back will keep track of how many occurrences of each object we have put into it. Uh, and that will be some uh, integer, the occurrences will be integer, and then we send the method print string to it. And then what we're doing with it, we are showing the result on the transcript, as we did earlier when we said, when we wrote enter a line to the transcript, we show the result to the transcript, meaning to standard out. And then we have a comma here, that means we are also sending a space out to the transcript. And the reason we're sending a space, because we want to first show how many occurrences of lowercase a do we have, then we write a space, then how many occurrences of lowercase b, uh, uh, and uh, so on. So we have a space in between. So this uh, is an example 
of a uh, uh, Smalltalk program and notice that the syntax is really extremely simple because uh, what we're always doing is sending a message which is on the right hand side to an object which is on the left hand side and the object is either a class like a transcript or a back here or an instance of a class like the f here the f is an instance of a class and we sent for example the add method sorry the add message to the instance f instance of a back now we will we will run this program later when we when we look at uh, one of the possible environments that we can use with smalltalk uh, and talking about, about environments, uh, the language, the language itself, the Smalltalk language, is really a part of the environment. And what is the environment? It's it's where you write your programs. So it's a kind of a graphical user interface. And as we said earlier, Smalltalk uh, implemented really the first graphical user interface, which then was uh, and and the the original graphical user interface that came on the first Macintosh computer was influenced by the the Smalltalk uh, GUI. And what does it consist of? Well, it has an editor where you can edit your programs or your classes. It has a translator where you can compile. And it has a virtual machine. Uh, so the environment itself is actually also written in Smalltalk. That means it can be modified by the user. All, this, all the source code of the environment, all the source code of the inbuilt classes is browsable and modifiable from within the environment. And notice that here it says that Smalltalk has a virtual machine. That points to the fact that Smalltalk is actually interpreted. So when a Smalltalk program is compiled, it's compiled to uh, intermediate code, a byte code, and the bytecode is the one that is being interpreted. Notice that this is not Java bytecode, this is a, a special uh, bytecode that, uh, that has been made for, for Smalltalk. So the Smalltalk language is an interpreted language. Um, so And notice that we talked about earlier that it has dynamic typing. Now, there are many possible Smalltalk environments that you can choose. Let's see if I can there it is So I'm here at the web page uh, smalltalk.org versions and here's a list of many of the possible uh, Smalltalk environments that you can use for developing. Uh, one of the better known is for example uh, Object Studio by Syncom. Uh, Squeak Smalltalk is another one well known. Visual Aids by IPAM and so on. Uh, and uh, the one that we are going to use for uh, uh, experiment with Smalltalk is actually GNU Smalltalk, which is a, a free and open source implementation that closely follows the Smalltalk AT, AT language. And the reason why we're choosing that one is that it, it doesn't have, uh, it's, a, it's a command line interface. So, because we are not uh, spending a lot of time in this course uh, learning the small talk uh, uh, environment, or we don't want to, we don't have time to learn uh, the small talk environment, we're just going to emphasize the, the command line interface. And that's why we just choose uh, GNU small talk. But if you're interested, you can experiment with one of those. Uh, 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 graphical user interfaces uh, that are available on that list. But let's uh, make a break here. <laughs>